And after those who accused her left, Jesus said to the woman, Where are they, those who accuse you? No one accuse you? And then he said, Neither I. Go and sin no more. The story of the woman caught in adultery is a very beautiful story that teaches us a great lesson. And the lesson that teaches us is how many times we were the accusers of people who have been, because of their weak nature, found doing not those things that are not good. And how many times also we find ourselves in the middle by others pointing fingers at us. And that is what really the readings today is all about. In the first reading we saw the chosen people of God that after they experienced what happened from the, when their fathers who left Egypt to come to the promised land, how God even in the, in the uh, wilderness and in the desert he brought, brought them food and brought them water and how that experience now is going to work again when they are leaving about um, Babylon where they went again to be a slave because of their infidelity towards God and now the prophet Isaiah is saying to them take courage because the Lord is the one who does not remember the sin but lead us to a future and that is to the promised land and that's why today the gospel today is the same the same journey Jesus is leading that woman and lead even the elderly and the and the and the scribes to their to bring them to their senses because they are too called to be with him in the glory of heaven and today we see in that second reading how saint paul pour out his very sentiments his very experience to teach the people of Philippi that the word of God that he received, especially when he was called from the way from the road to Damascus, how it worked with him and revealed in him the let go and begin again. And we know that Saint Paul that's what he did. As soon as the Lord Jesus referred to him that he is is persecuting him and understands the importance of what Jesus is trying to do for him or trying to change of him. St. Paul left the old way and embraced the new way. He began to preach about Jesus. But today St. Paul reminds us that that's why he did what he did. Because everything that is what in front of him, his ego, his success, his uh, achievement, was nothing comparing to achieve Christ. Because the goal of life, if you really are a smart person, is not to achieve the, 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 uh, the richness of this world, or the accumulation of this world, or the things of this world, because they are things that God gave to us for use and to be also ministered to others to use. But they will be left behind. What, the, what will take us to Christ is to know Jesus as the eternal Son of God, who comes to lead us the way, to put us on the tracks, to lead us to our happiness, which is heaven. And that's why St. Paul said, Jesus himself, come and endure the suffering and death. And I want to conform to that. I want to really be part of that passion. I want to, to, to run, to run that, that hill to Calvary. So that I, who am nailed to that cross, because of my weakness and my sinfulness, I have strength in Jesus, that he who overcome everything that was in front of him during his life, death, and even the, the insult that he received on the cross, he remained strong because his faithfulness to his father was to do the will he sent him to do. And that is the redemption of the world. And that's why today in that gospel that we find today, we find a woman who really is a subject of very much meditation. Because each one of us, whether we like it or not, we have been there. We have been there, if not in adultery, in other ways. And we don't want people to expose us. We have been there in gossiping about people. 
We have been there in destroying the character of other people. We have been there in doing all kinds of sort of things for other people. But believe me, those things did not achieve nothing because it came, it, it came back to us. Because, you know, uh, evil is, is something. Evil is that we wish to others sometimes that evil knock at our doors. And that's why many times when we find ourselves in that middle with everyone accusing us and everyone talk about us, we don't feel very good. In fact, we feel very shameful. And sometimes that same shameful we bring to others. And that is what Jesus is trying to say. That's why he bent down. And he began to write because he does not want to be part of this gossiping. He does not want to be part of this accusation. God is not sending his son to condemn the world. He did not send his, his son to condemn this woman because of her fragility of nature. Maybe that's the only income she has. That's the only way she knows. That's the only way she was trained when she was a young girl. That's the only way she can survive by giving herself to these men that for little money or for nothing they will use her. And many of those accusers, they know her well. Sometimes the uh, scriptures, um, commentaries say that many of them, they know her. And they know her in a very, very, very meaningful way. And that's why today Jesus is teaching us to, to ignore this gossip, to ignore these things. We are not to accuse. We are here to forgive. We are here to give chance to other people because of fragility they have said. He is not he is not confirming or he is not uh, up, um, upholding her sin. In fact, when everyone left because he asked them to confess their sins, if there any one of you who have not sinned and all of them commit themselves that they have sinned because they throw the stone on the floor and they left. And when he found himself with her, and that's what God do with us, he wants us to find us alone. And that's why many times we experience all kinds of things in life that sometimes we run away from God, we try to do our own way, but God will find us alone. And He will find us at that moment of weakness, at that moment that we need the most. And He said to us, no one accuse you? And then we say, oh Lord, no, neither I. Remember that the story of the prodigal son, the, st the story of the woman at the well, all of them teach us the same story. And that is the theme of Lent. That's why the church find these readings for our meditation, so that we make our exercises. And the exercises is, we are going to see, does the story fit in my life? And if it fits in your life, dear people, make a, an act of contrition. Go to confession. Release yourself from the sin and try your best not to do it again. Because if you are not happy when somebody accuses you, neither they will be happy when we accuse them. And this is what really uh, Lenten season is all about. is a lesson of growth in the spiritual life. That's why the Word of God will be proclaimed during this Lent. That's why we have missions. That's why we have all kinds of, of different various activities, stations of the cross, masses during Lent, to really challenge us to celebrate Lent. Because if we don't celebrate Lent, we cannot celebrate Easter. Because Easter is what Lent prepares us for, to celebrate the solemnity of the dying and rising of Jesus. And that is the same thing for us, to die to sin and to nail it to the cross, because that, that's why Christ came, to save us from sin, and to experience the joy of Jesus resurrected in our life, that we reside, uh, risen, right, risen with him, so that that resurrection will lead us to the happiness of our hope. My dear people, remember what St. Paul said, and I conclude with these words. Keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. If our eyes is fixed on Jesus, Nothing in this life matters, because our goal is not to go in the tomb, our goal is to be with God. God bless you.